So, you're interested in what browser is best in terms of battery drain, Safari or Chrome? That is the question. Well, you're in the right place. In today's video, we go through a little experiment I did recently. I took Chrome and I took Safari on my 2021 MacBook Pro. Here's the specs of the machine if you're interested. And I did pretty much the same thing on each browser for an hour at a time. I wanted to do a normal day in the life test this isn't supposed to be some great computer science experiment. It's aimed at giving you practical, real world results that will help you decide what browser really is for you. However, I did log what the built-in Mac Activity Monitor app says against two things. Number one, the energy impact, and number two, the 12 hour power score. I won't be going into these stats in this video, but if you do want a PDF of the full breakdown, click the drop box link below to download a PDF copy with all the results broken down so you can take a look. So the rules of play were, the Mac must start at the beginning of each test at 100% battery and then be unplugged obviously. It must have the normal background apps I have left running, things like Dropbox, Adobe Creative Cloud, but nothing else open. The conditions had to be roughly the same so both tests were done in my office at about the same temperature. I had to try my best to do roughly the same sort of things on each platform. That was harder than it seems, but I did try. I had to do 15 minutes of each task. So to break that down, that was 15 minutes of Netflix, 15 minutes of Facebook usage, 15 minutes of browsing around Amazon, and then 15 minutes of editing a photo on Adobe Lightroom on the browser, of course. So how did it go? I hear you ask. The conclusion is, you guessed it, that Chrome drained more than Safari. Here's the breakdown of the final results. After an hour of use on each, we had 91% left on Chrome and 94% of battery left whilst using Safari. So how long did it take to get down to each percentage? Let's break it down. Well, in order to get to the 99% mark, it took 31 minutes of Chrome usage. And in that time, we watched 15 minutes of Netflix, we did 15 minutes of Facebook browsing, and we started one minute of looking around Amazon. In comparison though, we did a whopping great 42 minutes of Safari usage before we dropped 1%. So that's 15 minutes of Netflix, 15 minutes of browsing Facebook and 12 minutes of Amazon usage. So both Chrome and Safari were now on the Amazon task. Chrome though had been used for only 31 minutes, whereas Safari had been used for 42 minutes. So hands down, Safari is winning at this stage with an 11 minute performance difference. So in order to get to 98%, interestingly, Chrome performed better. It lasted six minutes before dropping another 1% during the time we were browsing at Amazon. While Safari only took one minute to drop down to 98%, which to be honest, I was a bit sort of confused by. I wasn't doing anything particularly intensive on Safari either. I was just looking at some AirPods on, at the time on Amazon. So at the 98% mark, we had been working on Chrome for 37 minutes and on Safari for 43 minutes. Safari still winning at a six minute lead overall at that point. I thought it was interesting that it dropped so fast on Safari, closing the gap, but I guess we had actually been working for six minutes longer than Chrome still, weird. So between 98% and 97%, it took four minutes for Chrome and six minutes for Safari. Chrome was on Amazon and Safari was on Lightroom. So at that point, at the 97% mark, we had been using Chrome for 41 minutes and we'd been using Safari for 49 minutes. Between 97 and 96%, it took only four minutes for both. However, at this point on Chrome, we were still on Amazon and on Safari, we had actually been on Lightroom for three minutes already. So that's one to Safari. So we were at the 45 minutes of use on Chrome and 53 minutes of use on Safari. For 96 to 95%, Chrome dropped within four minutes of use having now been on Lightroom for two minutes, and Safari was obviously still on Lightroom and took six minutes to drop down, so ind indicating better performance there still. For 95 to 94%, Chrome took two minutes to get to, and Safari took three minutes, both now obviously on Lightroom. Again, Safari performing better there. So at the 94% mark, we had been using Chrome for 51 minutes and had hit the hour, of usage with Safari. 
so Safari won hands down at the hour mark. Chrome went on to drop a percentage every three minutes of Lightroom usage and between two, 92 and 91 percent it took four minutes to get there um, and then of course we hit the hour of usage. I did monitor the energy impact and the 12 hour power score. I'm not going to go into all the technicalities but overall I saw much higher stats particularly with the 12 hour power score throughout whilst I was using Chrome. By the way, the 12 hour power score is defined by Apple as the average energy impact of the app in the last 12 hours or since the Mac computer started. Lower is better. So I was seeing a lot higher results with Chrome. If you're interested in seeing those stats because you're more nerdy than most, I've added a Dropbox link in the description below. Feel free to check that out and download a PDF of the breakdown of the test. I included the time, the energy impact, the 12 hour power score at each point and when each dropped by. So this little experiment has proved with Chrome uh, at the top of the hour being taking us down to 91% of battery and Safari taking us down to only 94% that of course Safari is better in terms of performance. Now, obviously, if you're watching this video, you likely would have guessed that but I still wanted to make this video to set in stone that Safari is actually performing better on a MacBook Pro um, and is clearly optimized for the MacBook Pro by Apple. So you might be thinking, which, one, which browser do I tend to use? Well, for some reason, I've always worked on Chrome and I quite like it, to be honest. I think mainly the password manager I use has historically only had a Chrome extension, which has led me to use Chrome. And also because I can sync my bookmarks and my uh, browsing history across platform on both Windows and uh, Mac devices. However, all that being said, if I'm out and about without a power cable, I will certainly be using Safari because ultimately it's going to perform better. It's going to give me the maximum amount of battery life. Certainly if I've forgotten my power cable at home, I will be using Safari. Anyway, hope this video has been interesting and it's helped you get one step closer to deciding what browser you're going to work with more permanently. Take care guys, remember to hit the like and the subscribe button, follow for more videos like this, tech related videos, video editing, tutorials, all that good stuff. You guys are the best, bye for now.